Hi, welcome to the Hindustan Times Leadership Summit. Uh, this is the first day and we're almost at the fag end of all sessions. Uh, we have with us uh, Ashwini Ashokan, the founder and CEO of AI platform Mad Street Den. And uh, we're going to talk to her about uh, her journey and uh, her future plans going forward. Uh, Ashwini, thank you so much for joining us. Um, uh, firstly, can you tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, the Mad Street Den journey and what's it been like for you so far? Um, so Mastery Den was started um, with a vision to bring um, computer vision specific AI out of the labs of the world, the different science labs of the world, and um, scale it in the context of different types of markets, um, and putting it in the hands of you know people across the globe. Um, AI for the longest time has been sitting in research labs across the globe, and there have been decades and decades of progress in terms of the core tech itself. Yeah. But, um, you know, I, like I'd love to say uh, over and over again, AI is definitely one of those technologies that's looking for a problem to solve. Yeah. Um, and as a company, we've been very focused on figuring out what does bring something like this out in the wild? Yeah. What is that? Yeah. And how do you put it in the hands of people? It involves so much behavior change. You know, it's going to change the way people interact with each other, with the world around them. and. Um, there's a lot of thinking there in terms of like how does this actually play in in a person's everyday life and we have an AI platform essentially we're a B2B enterprise company right. um, that uh, is currently very focused on the retail vertical yeah. so we work with um, brands we work with multi-brand retailers we work with online marketplaces across the globe um, in North America Southeast Asia Europe South America mm -hmm. Um, across the globe and really trying to um, figure out how computer vision or image and video based intelligence yes. can make the process of um, experiencing whatever kind of product it is, right? Yeah. Whether it's fashion or it's furniture or yeah. different types of things that people are basically interacting with, yeah. how does it make that experience very different? Um, using AI as well. And, and so far, what is the kind of uh, conversations and response and feedback that you've received from retail companies that you've um, approached or yeah. working with? So we've had, um, you know, this is, and, 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 I, and I say this all the time as well, which is a tech like this has been around for a while. Yes. But the minute you take it out and put it in the wild, it starts to break. Mm -hmm. And that's largely because, you know, you can build AI for a particular context. And if you take it out of that context and put it in a series of other contexts, it's very hard for AI to just learn on the go, and 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 and, and it will come a couple of decades from now. I'm sure we'll be there where you know we have more general purpose intelligence. But today, in, you know, most of the AI being built is for very specific types of contexts. And so we've been very successful in the last, in particularly the last 12 months, I would say, okay. um, in you know taking our computer vision platform into all these different geographies, mm -hmm. into the different segments inside of retail, yeah. and um, working with companies companies like Levi's or you know Macy's or Mercado Libre in South America or you know Zilingo in Southeast Asia which is we we try and pick logos that are definitely breaking boundaries in a particular way within their segment um, Zilingo is the name of a of a of a what what started off as a really small startup out of Bangkok and Singapore today is like one of the fast and growing uh, online marketplaces in Southeast Asia that's that's so cutting edge those guys are constantly using video um, yeah. um, as a way of, of, of doing retail, which is, you know, which people are already predicting is going to happen on scale in two years. And this is a company that's doing it so fantastically already today. Um, and so we try and, and work with companies that, that are breaking the, bond, the boundaries, boundaries and that, that, that are trying to quickly move the out of them. conventional retail uh, Absolutely, sector. Absolutely, even in the conventional retail sector. And so it's, it's been a fantastic 12 months. Fantastic. Uh, artificial intelligence uh, is seen to be dominated by big technology companies mm -hmm. because of the advantage that they have of having data. Yes. Um, so how will startups like yours uh, compete with these big technology giants? Absolutely. And I think, um, you know, this is, a, this is something that comes up a lot. Yeah. Um, how are you, how do AI companies really end up surviving in the, in the, in the long run, given the big players over there? Yeah. Um, and what is not usually uh, spoken of is, is that in order for AI to thrive in a particular vertical, yes. it's extremely important to get domain-specific data. Okay. And, you know, Target. you know, the Googles of the world have access to Google's yes. kind of data. data. The Facebooks of the world have access to and their data, data the right? Yes. So everybody yes. has access to data within their walled garden, within their applications, okay. right? Okay. But they don't get access to the retailer's data. 
they don't get access to you know um, catalogs or any any vertical that you take right yeah. whether it's media or finance or retail or anything yeah. a lot of these guys do not have access to company specific data or what people are doing across websites and other companies yeah. and that is where a company like ours comes into play mm -hmm. is because we work one on one with every one of these types of companies so you have access and so to we different have kinds main of data. specific data yeah. that you know the, the big players today don't have access to and so um, as a result again this is also why we didn't start off the company as being like a generic developer platform and we went behind a very Focused specific vertical data. going into a very specific domain because what we can then do with that domain becomes really much more Benefit, powerful yeah. than you know any big company out there. So artificial intelligence is seen to be dominated by big technology giants in India uh, because they have the advantage of data, in fact even globally. So how will startups like uh, Mad Street Den sort of compete with these big, big technology giants? Um, this is a question that comes up a lot um, in the context of small startups in the AI space and uh, there's a lot more acquisition activity than there is um, growth and scale with the startups um, in the AI space. But if you look at it from a perspective of data, I mean, which is, which is where you were going, startups like ours work with companies within specific domains. And as a result, we have domain-specific data and we have domain-specific relationships that the Googles and the Facebooks of the world don't have. So they have access to data that or activity that happens within their world gardens. Right? They do not have access to what's, what, what Apple has access to, or Apple does not have access to what Microsoft or Google has. So, so it's a very walled garden type approach. But if you take the five big players off, and if you look at the world of the entire market of retailers or financial uh, institutions or media companies, if you look at any of these other verticals, there are thousands and thousands of players other than the top four that are there. And that data and being able to work with domain specific data and being able to add value to the entire world of users that exist within those different companies, you know, within those different sites is, is something that we have the power to do because as an enterprise company, we get to work with all of these um, uh, domain specific players uh, and their users. And as a result, we're able to add value directly to their consumers and their users, which a Google or a Facebook are unable to do today. Right. Uh, it's interesting that you mentioned media companies, uh, considering that even they have a lot of access to user data and things like that. Um, do you have plans of working with the media as a sector specifically going forward or finance or any other Hopefully, sector? hopefully that is the plan. But right now the entire company is completely focused on retail just because it is, there's so much to do within this space, right? There is yeah. so much within every geography. Retail is taking a slightly different trajectory in each market. Yes. Um, and we are looking at South America, like I said, we're looking at Europe, we're looking at Italy and France, we're looking at um, you know, China, we're looking at Southeast Asia, we're, we're, in, we're across the globe with a handful of logos, which was our initial strategy. Mm -hmm. And there's so much to go in terms of scale just within retail, just because of the different types of segments that are there. But we are beginning to look into things like media, um, and we do hope that there are a lot of adjacent verticals to the platform that we're building. At the end of the day, um, our success will hopefully be in that we're able to leverage an AI platform in a meaningful way yeah. on scale across industries. And so that's the eventual goal, uh, but right now all eyes are on retail. All right, um, and I'm sure you get asked this question all the time, but what's oh, no. it like to be a woman in the tech space, considering specifically in India, it's dominated by men and uh, even... Oh, it is everywhere. Everywhere. Um, it's not an India thing, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, it's hard. It's very hard. Yeah. Um, I say that a lot. Um, and um, I think I'm doing, I would like to believe that I'm doing, in my own little way, something to change that. Um, you know, I, I've written about this pretty extensively. I've spoken about this pretty extensively. Our, our startup of 60 has more than 50% women um, across San Francisco, New York, uh, India. 50-60% um, of our CXOs are women. Um, you know, my, my CPO is a, is a very experienced senior woman um, from the tech industry. My chief growth officer who handles sales and marketing is a woman from um, who's had an extensive background in retail, um, you know, and the two other CXOs, my CTO, my husband, and my chief scientist who was a professor of neuroscience, both of them, you can tell, I mean, I, I feel like it has to be top down absolutely in order for any kind of diversity or any kind of 
just basic respect and basic culture of, of, of you know, um, mutual respect needs there. And, and the, the team that we put in place very consciously, is very conscious about that because I have made it a big agenda within the company. But also within the industry, I talk about this a lot and hopefully we're clawing out of there in our own little ways, I guess is what, what I can say. Um, sitting on that panel just a couple of minutes ago, um, flanked by two people who, I mean, I guess don't have to think about what it means to come back home. They don't have to worry about family. They don't have to worry about children. They don't have to worry about, it's, it's, it's day and night. I mean, you can't remove, like I can't just come back home and be like, I'm gonna continue working. Um, I, I have to come back to kids and I have to accommodate kids in the workplace. We have a childcare and a nanny at workplace. We've got a pet and child friendly place. And I think the only way to change the status quo is to start doing something, is to start doing something in your own little way and hope that it has large ripple effects. And just by being here and doing what I'm doing, I'd like to believe it's already better than what it could be. Oops, absolutely. On that inspiring note, more power to you and thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you.